Okay, I'm going to show you how to use the hvplot command from the whole of his suite to quickly visualize data and interactively visualize data from some gridded model output, in this case, the GFS global forecast model. So I'm going to use X-Ray. And so I'm going to import X-Ray as XR. And we're going to import hvplot that x-ray. So just with these two packages, we can we can do a lot, as you'll see. So x-ray can consume a lot of different kinds of things to create data sets. Um, we're going to go look for the uh, GFS uh, from a thread server, uh, which I know is at Unidata. So if we search GFS threads Unidata, we get back this GFS uh, forecast. And we can see actually this best forecast time series so if we click on the best forecast time series, we get right to what we want. This is uh, um, taking the best data from each hour uh, to create a continuous time series. So uh, what we want to open is this OpenDAP URL. There's lots of different ways to access this data, but OpenDAP is the most convenient for X-Array in this case. Um, we can just copy this data URL and then drop it in here. So I could say URL equals url equals and drop that in and now we can just open this as an x-ray data set so i can say ds data set equals xr dot open data set url if i do that i can type ds and see the metadata from this data set uh, when you open up a data set with x-ray you don't read the data but you just read the metadata and the coordinate information so we can see there's a lot of dimensions to this data a lot of coordinates. There's also a ton of data variables. Um, if you're interested in exploring what's in this, you can look at this list. If you hover over here, you can see exactly what these, what the names are. Um, but you, if you actually want to figure out, you know, what a particular variable is in a little more detail, you can click over here on the attributes, and we can see that the long name of this variable is the momentum flux v component, and it's average. So um, so you can explore the data this way, uh, but if you know what you're looking for, um, you can also do things like you can say ds um, u, for instance, for u velocity, and hit tab, and you can see all the different u component of wind uh, variables that are available to us. Okay, so we could say, um, we could go down to uh, height above ground and just take a look at this variable. Oh, and we get back an error. Dataset has no attribute u. So actually, with variables that have a dash in them, we can't use this sort of uh, syntax where we say ds dot variable name. We need to st instead use it as a key, uh, like a dictionary. So we say instead, um, u component of wind above ground like this. And we get back um, just the information for that particular variable. Now, what, you know, if we're interested in looking at the continental U.S., we might want to slice uh, this data just over the U.S. So we can say um, we can create a new data set, DS uh, continental U.S., CONUS equals DS, and then this using the slice syntax, select cell, and we can give it longitude and latitude ranges that we want to select on. So we can say lawn equals slice and then minus uh, 130 to minus 60, say. Um, and then from, uh, let's say from, say 20, slice from 20 to 50. Okay, if we, and if we do this, then we could say, um, we could change this to DS con conus. See what we have here, oops, and we have zero we have latitude zero, longitude zero. So let's um, actually let's move let's move this down here. So we have um, uh, we've we've the slice has not worked as we expected, um, and so um, what we can do is we can insert a cell here, let's say, and take a look at just this again. Um, so we have this variable, and we can see that the longitude, latitude values go from 90 down to minus 90, and longitude goes from zero to 360. So 
it's not using, um, we don't have the minus 180 to 180 uh, kind of syntax or that, you know, that we were trying to use here. So a, a quick way to do, get around this would be just to subtract 360 because we're, you know, we're dealing here with minus 130 to, to minus 60. So what we can do is just uh, say here, we can add a ds ln equals ds ln minus 360. And, and then when we slice our data here, we can slice, instead of slicing from 20 to 50, we slice from 50 to 20. And now take a look at what we have, and that looks a lot better. So um, now we have the, the values that we expected. So um, to plot this, we can just add an hvplot command, but we have to tell hvplot what kind of plot we want. Um, and so we can do that by saying, just saying x equals ln, y equals lat, so it knows what the, the x and y variables are supposed to be. And from that, it can figure out what kind of plot to make. Um, but we know that these are latitude and longitude, and I know a little bit about hvplot, and so I can say geo equals true, because it's a geographic projection. And now if I just execute this, we should get back a map of the continental US. Um, and actually we could, um, let's add a coastline. Just to make sure that we're in the right place. Yep, okay. So um, very quickly, we just get a, a way to visualize this data. And you can see that it because we specified just these coordinates here, HVPlot was smart enough to take the other coordinates, which are the height above ground and the time, and make them sliders over here. So we have these little widgets that we can control this plot with. So we already have, we can do just a lot with this, this data already. We can um, hover and see the values. We can switch the height above ground just by moving the slider. We can go to 20 meters or, or even up to 100 meters. Um, if we go back, we can go back to 100 meters. We can slide this time slider forward and see how things are changing in time. And if, in fact, we can see this uh, this big wind, uh, this is very strong winds um, that are coming uh, the day after Christmas here on the East Coast. So um, one thing that I actually like to do is when I'm plotting this is to add this um, rasterize equals true here. And this isn't that important for um, this relatively re low resolution model output, but for higher resolution model output, what this does is it is even though you may have thousands of grid cells in this in this window, you're only specifying here some the number of pixels, like 600 by 300 or so, and we could make that explicit by adding it here. But um, what this rasterize equals true does is it rasterizes the data on the back end and just delivers you the pixels. Um, and so if we do this. Um, we're only transmitting a very little amount of data to the browser, so, so it's very quick. Um, but if we zoom in using these tools on the side, say to the Great Lakes region, um, it will re-render the data to the screen uh, to, the, to these uh, certain number of pixels again. And so we can use this to drill down to the highest resolution of the data. In this case, um, GFS is not very highly resolved, so we see a bunch of squares. But you will notice that it did rescale on the plot for the window that we're interested in. So we can, it has some value even for low resolution data because as we pan around, it will automatically rescale to the region of interest so we can see really what's going on. All right, that's it. Um, but you can use this approach for pretty much any uh, model output. Um, so it's a really powerful tool. Hope you enjoyed it.